am going to be discussing hedgehog heating. Um, I want to first address the state of the cages right now. I'm actually right in the middle of spot cleaning. As you can see, their wheels are not in the cage. I was right in the middle of spot cleaning the cages. However, I realized it was starting to get dark and I wanted to film this video today. So I figured you guys can deal with the <laughs> mess a little. Um, this is just how my hedgehog's cages tend to look. Um, their wheels actually have poop on them and are soaking right now, but that's, um, oh, and their food bowls aren't in right now. But that's generally what their cages look like when they go to bed at night. So the first thing to address is that regardless of what your heating setup is, if you have a hedgehog, you need a thermometer in the cage. The reason you need a thermometer in the cage as opposed to say using your home thermostat is because you actually need to be able to see what the temperature inside the cage is. The temperature in your home that your thermostat would read can vary drastically from the cage temperature. So a thermometer allows you to get a more accurate readout. I have the ZooMed ones. They were very cheap on Amazon. I have one in each cage, not just one, you know, sharing the space. Um, I have it so that it runs right down to the center of the cage. And I check this every day, multiple times a day. Right now it's a little warm um, because our air conditioner is off but it's not too warm. If it was to get too warm, I would then turn my AC on. I don't know if you can actually see Blaze's very much, but his is at 76 degrees, which is a whole four degrees difference from this cage here. So that is why you want to be sure that you have a thermometer in each cage, even if they happen to sort of share a space like mine to, my two do. Um, they also happen to use CHEs. CHEs stand for ceramic heat emitter. It's a type of heat lamp, um, but it only emits heat. Most heat lamps actually um, emit light as well, and you don't want those as hedgehogs are nocturnal. You want your hedgehogs to stay between 72 degrees and 80 degrees, that's Fahrenheit. Um, that's their optimal temperature range. Preferably, you wouldn't want them to go below 74 degrees, but below 72 is much, much too low. So you may be wondering at this point, what happens if hedgehogs get too cold? Why shouldn't they get too cold? Why is heating so necessary for this small pet? The reason being is that when they get too cold, they actually attempt to hibernate. Their body will become very cold to the touch. They'll get quite wobbly. They will stop eating as much. Um, and eventually they will become unresponsive. Now, in animals that can actually survive hibernation, this is normal. However, in African pygmy hedgehogs, because of their domestication, they cannot survive hibernation. So, if they do happen to get too cold and they attempt to hibernate, it can be incredibly lethal. If they are too cold too long, the likelihood of survival is very, very slim. Now, if that's not to say that if they get too cold, they will immediately die. That's not the case. The way to tell if your hedgehog is attempting to hibernate is if they are cold to the touch, if they will not unball, and that is unusual for them, uh, if they're walking and they're quite wobbly. These are all different ways to tell. I will leave links down below for a more in-depth detailed explanation of this. If you happen to catch your hedgehog in that state, it is incredibly important that you warm them up. You do not, however, want to put them in water. You do not want to put them directly on 
anything that is too warm as it can shock their system, you want to gradually warm them back up. The best way to do this is to put your hedgehog under your shirt, skin to skin contact, and let them warm up. I feel safest recommending about an hour of this. Some hedgehogs come around much quicker if they haven't been cold too long. Some come around much slower. You'll be able to tell when your hedgehog's belly is hot to the touch and they are active again. Now, this may be slightly uncomfortable uh, for you and the hedgehog if they're not a cuddler, but especially for you as their quills can be quite abrasive to the skin and pokey. <laughs> um, so if that is not something you're interested in ever having to do, a hedgehog is probably not the best option for you because that is the number one way to warm them up. If they have been too cold for too long and warming them up skin to skin is not working, it is imperative that you rush them to the vet, even if it's in the evening. That is why it is incredibly important to have an emergency vet in your area. If it has been attempting to hibernate far, far, far too long and even the vet cannot bring it back, it is likely that your hedgehog will either die on its own or have to be euthanized which would be incredibly tragic. So I cannot, I cannot stress enough the importance of some sort of heating setup. Now, as I said, we use ceramic heat emitters. For a ceramic heat emitter, you need a thermometer as usual. I recommend that with all, you need that regardless of what heat setup you use. With a ceramic heat emitter, you will need a dome. I'm using an eight and a half inch, but a 10 inch is also good. Try not to get the wire ones or the ones smaller than the eight and a half inch. They don't disperse the heat evenly. Inside, you'll need a heat emitter bulb. You cannot use the UV bulbs or anything that emits light. So the ceramic heat emitters are the best. This way you can leave them running 24 seven with the use of a thermostat and not disrupt their light schedule. Now with a CHE, they will run on their own. However, I do not ever recommend using a ceramic heat emitter without a thermostat. A thermostat is the same thing it is in your home. It controls the temperature of the heat lamp so that the heat lamp turns on when it gets too cold and off when it gets too hot. I currently have mine set to about 79, um, roughly 80. We also have another type of thermostat hooked up to blazes. This one here doesn't have a number system. It has a color system. So you have to play around with that one a bit more. So basically how this works is the CHE cord hooks into the thermostat here and the thermostat plugs into the wall. Now each thermostat comes with its own probe. That's the black probes you see next to the white thermometer probes. Those are to gauge the temperature of your cage and to tell your thermostats when to turn on and off. The reason you need a thermostat with your ceramic heat emitter is because without the thermostat you cannot control the heat lamp's temperature. This is a problem because with the thermostat, you can set it to a temperature and your heat lamp will turn off when it gets to that set temperature and then turn back on when it gets too low below that temperature. Without it, your heat lamp will continue to run whether it's too hot or not. So for example, right now, as you saw earlier, Draco's cage is at 80. 
this black probe is measuring that is it is at 80 and that I set it to 80 so when this registers that it goes above 80 degrees the heat lamp will turn off on its own now that's just one of the ways you can heat your hedgehog's cage another way is a space heater I recommend ones that also have a thermostat built into them um, then you don't have to worry about overheating again I've got two separate ones they worked really well for us the downside of space heaters is the electricity CHEs um, use very little electricity and therefore affect your general electric bill much less however Space heaters do use a ton of energy and therefore do raise your electric bill. They also happen to heat your entire room. So if you're in, a mid in the middle of summer and you have your AC on, you would also need your space heater. This can be incredibly problematic because obviously it heats the entire room. So if you're trying to keep your room cool while keeping your hedgehog hot, it, it causes some temperature conflict there. A downfall of the ceramic heating meter, however, is that it can be a bit pricey. Now, I believe for one setup, I spent around $50 on Amazon. Um, what is expensive is the thermostat, unfortunately, but I you cannot skimp on the thermostat so um amazon does sales constantly if you plan on getting your hedgehog i would order their heat setup first of course and just keep an eye on the sales i believe i got this setup here for around fifty dollars but this one here was i or no, this one here was around $50 while this one here was around $70. Um, and that is because I managed to get this thermostat here on sale while the other one was still on sale, but less so. Um, so yes, the initial setup here can be quite expensive. Another way to heat the cage is to just heat the entire room. Now... Like I said, you can do this with a space heater or you can just keep your AC off. Um, for a while we did that because we don't have central air. We have AC units in the rooms. Um, so we just kept them off and the window open and that kept them warm for a while. Of course, the issue then is that you are hot. I know a lot of people um, set their home thermostats to about 75 so that nothing gets too cold um, this can work it isn't recommended um, solely because sometimes hedgehogs needs change now as I told you before their temperature range is 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit as you can see my boys stay very very close to the 80 degrees mark or at it. This is because my boys enjoy it warmer than colder. Some hedgehogs can tolerate colder much better. Mine are not fans. They're more active when it's warm. Um, they've always been like that. Some people, their hedgehogs are fine right at 72 degrees. That is something you'll have to deal with when you have your hedgehog. The issue is, is that if your hedgehog changes, for example, when it gets older, um, if it hibernates at 72 degrees, you will have to then raise the temperature of the cage by at least two degrees um, for a while. Because once a hedgehog attempts to hibernate, the likelihood of them attempting again within the same week is probable so if you're heating your entire house 
This means that if they attempt to hibernate at 72, you will have to then make sure that their cage temperature is no lower than 74. If they hibernate at 74, you'll have to make sure that their cage temperature is no lower than 76, and so on. It's not likely that they will hibernate any higher than 76. Um, if they do, you can bump it up to 78. If they hibernate at 78, I would take them to the vet because that is getting quite high and that can be a whole other issue than hibernation. So yes, I, I thoroughly recommend the ceramic heat emitter. They are a much more foolproof option. If you do have any questions about heating that I didn't cover in this video, feel free to leave them down below and I will answer you as quickly as possible. Um, as I said in my last video, YouTube has been quite weird about letting me know when you guys are commenting. So if you can't get a hold of me, go ahead and head over to my Instagram and ask your question because I do check that on a regular basis. I also, some updates here, I also recently, and by recently I mean today, <laughs> made a Facebook page. The Facebook page is brand new. It is under Pug Pibble Hedgy, so you'll be able to find it with the same YouTube and Instagram name that you're used to. Um, there will be a link down in the description as well. That is directly linked to my personal page, even though you don't you don't see my personal page, but that is directly linked to my personal page. So when you comment, I will get the notification and be able to reply to you much faster than pretty much anywhere else. So if you do have an important question or if you just want to go like our Facebook page, I will leave the link down below. Alrighty, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, leave them down below. And I will see you next time. Bye guys!